10th of September 1944, day 41 of the Warsaw Uprising. Suddenly, the morale of civilians and soldiers changes. Soviet planes start to attack German positions on the eastern side of the bank. Again, they can hear Soviet artillery. Finally, could it be true that the Russians are coming? Colonel uh, Felician Mayorkevich reports that everything changes when the feeling that the Soviets could finally appear and cross this river uh, and come to the aid of the Polish armed fighters. On the 9th, uh, over 10,000 civilians decided to leave the home army positions uh, and surrender to the Germans. On the 10th, just under 1,000, and by the 11th, just a few dozen. The Poles are gonna fight. They're gonna fight on because they believe they can still be saved. Added to which, this night, 20 Allied bombers take off to drop supplies to the beleaguered Polish fighters. Five of them are Polish, 12 of them are British, and three of them are South African. Uh, only 12 of them actually make it here to Warsaw. And when you get to Warsaw, it's not really hard to find the city because it was enveloped in flames and explosions. They've had to fly thousands of kilometers through heavy anti-aircraft fire, especially above the city here. When they drop their loads and then return to base, they're having to fly through um, a special squadron of night fighters that specializes in picking off uh, bombers that are damaged and the pilots are tired. Of the 20 that take off on this day, uh, five are lost. Overall, of the over 300 flights that are made from Allied um, planes, 13.3% of them are lost. Uh, this compares, for example, to the Nuremberg raids, which were often said to be the RAF's darkest hour, where losses run at 11.8%. Stalin has deliberately ordered the first Polish army, led by Zygmunt Berling, to be the ones that are going to approach Warsaw's Eastern Bank and then cross over the river. And he did this as part of a campaign of misinformation to the Allies, because then he could always claim that indeed the Poles did liberate themselves. The fact that many of the soldiers in this first Polish army had been press ganged into service when uh, Soviet Russia occupied the eastern part of Poland in the Nazi-German pact was an inconvenient fact that the West would have to choose to ignore. Along with, for example, the murder of thousands of Polish officers at Katyn in 1940. Yes, finally, on day 41, the Russians were coming. But when they arrived, it would not be as liberators or allies but as an army of occupation. Thank you very much for watching this episode of 63 Days of Extraordinary Courage. Please tune in to tomorrow's episode at 5 p.m. Warsaw time, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And don't forget to search for other episodes using the hashtag 63 days.